Hello everyone and welcome into another video. So if you clicked on this video and you're thinking, okay, what are your settings? Here they are. You can also find them down in the description of this video and I will explain them or I will try to explain them in the next couple of minutes and I will also show you in the next part of the video how you can get your own settings and how to perfectly match the game and the wheel. So I'm using a Club Sport DD Plus, which is a 15 Newton meter direct drive wheelbase. So if you have a DD Pro or if you have something else, you will need to do some adjustments, but I will show you about that later in the video. So let's get going with the explanation of what each setting does. And also, I'm using these settings in Gran Turismo, so all you have to do is that you need to go into controller settings, and I'm using the force feedback at maximum 8 out of 10, and the force feedback sensitivity is at 10. So, the, well, the recommendation is to have this one at 1, and this is the recommendation from Fanatec. I'm just using the exact opposite. It feels a little bit better, and... I don't know, it just suits my driving style a little bit more. But this one is the most important one that I would say, because on the wheel I am using a force feedback that is 50. So I'm using 7.5 Newton meters on the wheel, so the range is restricted to 7.5 Newton meters. And then again, in the game, I'm restricting it down to 80%. So I'm gonna explain this a little bit later. So what I do is, well, it's completely the opposite of what is recommended to do. So what is recommended to do is force feedback on the wheel up to 10 or 100, and then you just adjust the force feedback max torque in the game. So this is the recommended thing to do. Um, just I'm going to say it, I'm using the exact opposite. It feels okay for me. Um, just got used to it and it thinks, and I do think that is, well, it's the thing that really helps me in the long run. So I don't want to have too much torque, but I also don't want to have too, too low peak torque. So yeah, 8 is okay. I'm using 50 on, uh, well, I'm using 50 on the wheelbase and that's pretty much about it. So these are my in-game settings and let's just jump in. I'll try to explain each and every single one of these settings. So if we stop here, you will be able to see that the sensitivity pretty much means that if you change it down, mine is at auto, by the way. So your in-game settings should, or your wheelbase settings should match your in-game movement. So for example, this wheel needs to be matched at just about, I think it's just about 720. So we will adjust it at 720, maybe it's even lower, 630. Let's try it like that. And now it's going to be matched. So I do suggest using this one at auto, but this is what you can do if, uh, for example, if you want to adjust it by yourself. So you have to adjust it on the car basis so for example this car has i guess it has 630 degrees of rotation so you can flip it around if you increase the sensitivity you will be able to see that the wheel be turning a little bit less so in general what i do suggest is matching your sensitivity on the wheel that it matches your in-game movement i usually just put it at auto and it seems to be pretty good at auto so you can see auto moving it really nice and that's about it so if you move it to the next setting, I pretty much explained it in the previous one. So force feedback is, well, it's just about the dynamic range of the wheelbase. So if you have it all the way to 100, you will be able to use all of those 15 Newton meters of the wheelbase. If you have a GTDD Pro, then again, it's going to be like 5 Newton meters or it's going to be 8 Newton meters. It doesn't, it depends on which base you have. So I got this, my, I got this one at 50. So it means that I'm using 7.5 Newton meters. So the dynamic range is not 15 Newton meters, it's 7.5. And then again, I'm readjusting it in the game. So this pretty much means that if I increase this, it's all, well, I'm gonna add a couple of Newton meters and I'm going to increase the range of the wheelbase. If we go to the next one, which is full force, by the way, this is not fully integrated in Gran Turismo or any other game. So to be honest, I'm not exactly sure what it's going to be for, but it's here. I have no idea what is it for at this point, but I guess we'll see in the future. And then we're moving on to NDP. And the NDP is pretty much telling you how much dampening of the wheel you will have. Dampening, think of it as, let's say, a sponge. Like the car is car is more floaty and it's, it's very difficult to explain it. I got this mine at 5 and if you put it all the way, let's say, up to 100, it's going to feel like 
you're trying to do something but the wheelbase isn't really going to give you that information straight back i do suggest keeping this one as low as possible i know some of you guys said you want to use it at zero i try using it as five it seems to be okay so natural friction basically what it does it adds friction to the wheel so if you're using a car that doesn't have a lot of friction I don't know which car is going to be. This car has a lot of friction, so it's a group free car. If you're using something lighter and you want to want to add a little bit of friction, you can add it. You can add, let's say, five to ten. Uh, I would say five ten is the maximum that you need to go with. I do not suggest using this one at a hundred because you will have so much friction and you just won't be able to feel the car. In some games, I do recommend putting this at zero if you want to have like that scrubby feeling. It's uh, I do suggest like 5 to 10 is is okay. So I use that 10 and natural inertia. So what it does, it's basically the inertia of the whole wheel. So how much inertia does the wheel have when it starts r rotating? So when, for example, when you rotate the wheel, how much inertia is still going to keep on going? So I also recommend having this one at 5, which is, well, which is kind of on the low point but having this one at let's say a hundred we're just gonna make the wheel it yeah it's just gonna make it like very unnatural like you're not in a real car so i do suggest keeping it as low as possible but just for demonstration purposes we can keep it at a hundred and let's say we're trying to do this you see it just moving it into the middle like it really restricts that inertia movement so look at the hundred i guess it's going to really restrict it so you won't be able to spin the wheel if you just yeah if you just release it so if you if you leave it at five like i am using it or you might think of it as off you'll see what happens so for example let's see you can see the wheel is spinning up so that's that's the thing that it's kind of rotating the wheel it's giving it that inertia let's go to the interpolation interpolation is more like a filter of the signal so let's say you got, I think we will have just about 20 steps of it, and I am using just about three, maybe two. So the lower the setting, the rougher the signal, which means that you will feel every bump, you will feel absolutely everything on the road. So if you're trying to really feel the car and try to get every information from the car, I do suggest keeping this as low as possible, but still you want to have a little bit of smoothness. So I think two to three is just about right. Once again, it really depends on what you like. And okay, when we talk about Faye, or Faye, Faye is the next setting that I would like to explain. So Faye will, let's say, smoothen out or sharpen out those force feedback information that is going from the wheel. So for example, my Faye setting is at 100. And if I keep it at 100, I will have something like this. Or the wheel is going to be something like this. If I let it go, it will have some oscillations. Of course, this depends on the other settings as well. But if I do the same with zero, you will see what happens. So there is there is a lot, a lot of difference be between those two settings. I do recommend keeping it at 100. Of course, if you want to prevent oscillation, I do once again suggest adding NDP or NFR, but that's on the other side. So... I do, do not suggest keeping this one at zero because you will have something like this and the wheel, uh, the wheel settings and the wheel force feedback is just going to feel really weird. So if we move it on to the force, this is the overall force feedback of the wheel. I do have this one at 100, so it's kind of a master switch for all of the settings. So if you keep this one low, no information is going from the game to the wheelbase. Okay, we do have a signal, there is information, but absolutely nothing is going to happen and the wheel is going to stay as it is in the game. So I do suggest once again keeping this one at 100 because it will give you, well, it will give you the right feel of every single setting. So if you keep this one at zero, you just won't be able to feel anything. And if you keep it at 50, I don't think you really spend that much money not to feel all of the force feedback. So it's it's quite different and i do suggest this one at 100 so sprink and dpr i'm going to skip because they really don't do much in gran turismo and i think and i'm not sure why they even keep it in the menus so they do not have an effect everything is done with the ndp and nfr so if we go talk about the braking level this means that only if you have let's say v3 pedals you can adjust when the brake is going to vibrate 
So the brake vibration motors are going to uh, are going to come into effect when, for example, you reach 80%, like I'm doing it now. If we keep it, let's say, at a 50, when you reach 50% of braking, the vibration motors will start vibrating once again. So if you have this one at off, like I do, um, I don't think it's really much of a benefit uh, of the v freeze and you need to have a vibration motors in your pedals if you want to have this one so shock 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 is basically well it's kind of the kick of the vibration motors so it's kind of that shock movement and uh, it feels honestly i have never really felt that much of a difference if i was using it or not using it so i just like to keep it on to be honest, I'm not exactly sure why, but it feels okay, and I do not think this setting has anything to do with the overall force feedback and the overall performance of the wheelbase. And MPS, okay, this is something for different wheels, we're going to be talking about braking force. Braking force is the most common one, and I do have, uh, well, I do have most of my questions about the braking force. For this, you definitely need to go into the Fanatec settings and adjust your pedal settings first. So you just jump into uh, the software, you change your pedal settings, and then you go onto the wheel, and then you change it additionally on the wheel. So no one will ever have the same settings because everyone will have different spring settings on the pedals itself. You have different cylinders, you will have different, different springs, and it's always going to be a little bit different. So I got this mine at 85, but I'm not using all of those 90 kilos of my v3 pedals so that's what i'm not doing okay you can just change it to whatever feels okay but i, I have one suggestion for this one if you can reach 25 50 and 75 percent of braking like just like that without struggling too much your settings are perfect if you can feel the pedals without having to struggle struggle every time and look at how much braking pressure are you applying you are good to go so if you're, if you're struggling with that try readjusting these settings and i think everything will be fine so trying to find your settings that are going to suit your driving style and they're going to feel better for you so if you take someone else's settings they probably won't feel great so that's why you have to take a base setup and you have to readjust it to your own personal preference and now let's take a look how we can do something like this on pc and how you can get the perfect settings each time and okay, if you made it this far into the video, I have a couple of things that I would like to share with you. So if you're trying to find the perfect settings, you most likely will need to adjust something, but this will give you a good idea on what to look for. So we will go to the Fanatec website, or to be exact, we will go to the Fanatec forum, and here you can install Fanalab. So this is not Fanatec control panel, so it's not this. This is what you usually use to kind of adjust the profiles and the tuning menus. In this case, we will not be using this. We will just go to the blog and here you can install Fenelab. And what is Fenelab? Fenelab pretty much lets you kind of adjust all of the lighting, pretty much anything you can think of. So I installed the Fenelab and you can also install the profiles. So Maurice made some very nice profiles for pretty much any car and any game out there. So you just reinstall it or you just need to download it first it's already downloaded on my end so i'm not going to do it again you need to go into the zip file and i installed the zip file on my desktop so you can use the club sport dd plus is here dd2 is also here so the dd plus you have all of i think all of the possible well you pretty much have ac acc uh, you got Assetto Corsa, uh, iRacing, you pretty much got everything. So what do you need to do? When you install Fanalab, you just get into Fanalab and you click on whatever game you would like to get. So if it's Assetto Corsa, Assetto Corsa Competizione, it doesn't even matter. So the tuning menu is going to be the same one as in your control panel. So in general, what you need to do is that you can... Well, you can adjust it manually, but there is no need to it. So you can go to the game profile, you click on Assetto Corsa Competizione, and here you can go and click on import the settings. So I've already got my imported, but I'm just going to show you. So if you need a car, let's say we need to go to the desktop because this is where I got it. So Club Sport DD, ACC, and let's say we want the McLaren, and McLaren is going to be somewhere around here so this is the evo i already got this one and the game is going to tell me do you want to overwrite this one i'm going to say no because i've already done it so the mclaren is here and you can see all of the settings for the mclaren so it's 
1080 i think it's a little bit different than the game i think it's 480 but doesn't matter four speed back at 100 we got the full force which is disabled uh, the speed threshold for the rev meters and all of that stuff we got the brake force of course you can change this one clutch bite point so everything is here so this is the basic profile for the mclaren and of course you can just jump in here and you can see when these leds are gonna come to life so the wheelbase or the wheel is going to be very colorful if you have one. I have the Formula V 2.5 and it has all of the nice flashy LEDs. So it's pretty useful to have it. So LEDs are going to be right about here. You can readjust them. You can, you, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Traction control, uh, wheel lock, wheel spin. You can see how much is going to go up and down. And the tuning menu, I'm going to set it to 1 because it was usually at one if you need to import it you can just click here and it's going to be well it's going to be active profile so this is the active profile that i will have so the tuning menu is at one this is what we got and now if we go to assetto corsa and if we just hit drive just as we get going you will be able to see that now we got these very very nice leds the only thing that is missing here is the rotation angle so this is something that you will probably need to change Maybe you won't, maybe you will. It Once again, it depends. This is at 1080. This car is at 480, to be exact. And then when we change it, change the sensitivity so it matches your in-game settings. And then when you have it and when something happens and you can just see the rev meter going up and very, very nice LEDs. And all of a sudden, when it's time to shift, it's going to go flashing, uh, flashing blue light. So I'm going to take it very easy. You can see that the force feedback is pretty strong. So if you need to change something, you can change something. But it's a pretty nice thing to have. It's a pretty nice thing that you can uh, go through. So in general, if you're trying to find the settings, my settings, once again, are going to be down in the description. Or if you want to have a Fernal Lab settings for Maurice, you can, of course, download them. And they're going to be for ACC, iRacing and pretty much any game out there. So guys, once again, I really hope that you enjoyed in this one. So please let me know what you think. And if you like the video, please hit that like button. And uh, you might even want to subscribe if you want more of this content. So once again, thank you very much for watching. And until the next time, bye.